back with the Heifeld 400. It had also been a tough day for Kali Sulwalt and Simon Prinsloo who had no GPS or intercom communication and had to rely on hand signals. Naeem Musaji and Mohamed Mulston ran into problems when a bolt on the tyre rack Jimco steering rack broke, while Terence Marsh and Peter Grunewald, running third in the production vehicle category, were plagued by constant overheating. Former SA champions Richard Schilling and Chris Davies were having a solid outing in the Ace Co, with a Class B crew being chased by Derek de Toy and Ian Pinar, who were now leading Class B, courtesy of the error by Simon Beckett and Steve Harris. The Cape crew were now staring at their third victory in a row. Ivar Tollefsen and Quinn Evans were now leading Donaldson Nissen's entry, with the overseas pair also battling with constant overheating. The Nissan was being closed in on by Class E leaders Yanni Fisser and Jorks Leroux, who were looking for their first win of the season. The RFS Toyota crew had fought a running battle with Dion Fenta and Ian Palmer in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. Behind the two Class E cars, Louis Weichelt and Maret Besaignot were thinking of nothing more than a second successive finish in the N1 4x4 Ford Ranger. Championship leaders Duncan Foss and Rolf Pitchford were limping towards the finish in the Donaldson Nissan Navara. They were steadily dropping down the field and were being passed by everyone, including trains, planes, and automobiles. Keith and Andrew Macanetti and Bodo Bertolt and Philip Hersman, who were back on terra firma in the Atlas Copco Bat, also went past. Also limping towards the finish were early classy e leaders Lodebrain and Rian Hreling, who'd run into problems in the Ruhr Confort Ranger. Bula Buertis and Johan Pretorius had spent most of the day in the Buertis for food bat in other people's dust, with their race nearly ending in disaster. The space train cars are not known for their small turning circles, but all was well that ended well for Buertis and Pretorius, who were in their first season of national championship racing. Behind them, it had been a day of character building for Herman and Vichat Solvant, and a litany of problems ended, with a Solvant racing Zarko developing a misfire just 50 kilometers from the finish. There was a festive air among spectators lining the route and plenty of encouragement for crews battling it out in tough conditions. Back in action after a three-race break, Bapi Rubuluza and Kulili Vakalisa were headed for an encouraging classy result in the factory Ford Racing Ranger. Behind the KwaZulu Natal crew, Kutsia Labaskachni and Johan Gerber had inherited the Class D lead through the race Sonic's Nissan Hardbody, which was also battling with severe overheating problems. Also struggling along with overheating problems were early Class D leaders Diewald van der Breda and Johan de Toy, who'd gradually dropped back in the Northam Toyota and finally surrendered the lead to Labaskachni and Gerber. Back at the Carnival City Race headquarters, Gerard Duplessis and Fanny Serges put the finishing touches to what had been a stunning special vehicle victory in a near 10-year-old Jimco. Right on their heels were Shamir Varayawa and Siegfried Rousseau in the total motorsport porter. And when all the figures were finally toted up, only 16 seconds separated the two cars. The final podium place went to Evan Hutchison and Jim Bergman and was enough to wrap up the championship for the motorbike crew. A slice of history was made when the Atlas Copco Toyota crew of Gary Bertolt and Andre Vermeulen became the first Class SP independent crew to win a national championship race. There was delight in the Atlas Copco camp and more good news for the Factory Ford team with Neil Woolridge and Kenny Shortheimer picking up their second successive podium finish. The victors go the spoils, and it was a special moment for Duplessis and Sirches as they sprayed around the traditional champagne. Hey, young, as you see, for often, Mark, all it was for us. And I had tight gerai with the hardest boot. And that was all my yacht, it will be a fall for the key pressure here. And I had it good on the And two other rounds, I did all these fights with the car. And to us for, and to drugs on their own. Was my car a day story the end, but it was very lekker. It was a close call at the top of the leaderboard with only 16 seconds separating the first two crews. A great performance too from David and Gary White, who finished fourth overall and took the Class P honours. Apart from making history, the Bertolt from Milan victory also snapped a run of five successive Nissan wins in the Absa Off-Road Championship.
absolutely over the moon. Uh, I think to be the first privateer to ever win an SP uh -huh. against ultra competitive factories uh, is an incredible achievement. And to be quite frank with you, it's hats off to the team. Um, I've always said my job's the easy one. It's the team. I've got uh, Kenny and the Parker brothers and the guys together really made the difference today. Andre's navigating was absolutely impeccable. I think that made a big difference. So collectively, it's a great team effort for Atlas Copco. Toyota won the battle, but Nissan wins the war with 8th place overall and 6th in the SP class, enough to wrap up the production car championship for Duncan Force and Rolf Pitchford. For Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schulthammer, a second successive podium finish was another boost for Ford Racing. It's nice to uh, finish on the podium again, so hopefully next time we can win it. But really the car is improving, it's, uh, the diesel's working nicely. And uh, we need to get used to a little bit of the stuff on it. The, the talk differently and driving differently. But uh, no, for sure, it's really working nicely and the improvements have been fantastic. The Heifeld 400 is also time for Class P winners David and Gary White in the Ruhrkon Bat. Before we go, it was very nice. Bit of dust in the morning early, but after that it cleared up and we could just push, push, push. And um, we just had a great day. I really enjoyed the track. Uh, the route was set out very nicely. I really enjoyed it. Ivar Tolofsson and Quinn Evans hung on for fourth place in the production vehicle category and salvaged valuable championship points. It's actually probably most, one of the most varied uh, routes that we've, we've ever raced on, so it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Um, I think for a navigator it's, it's very challenging because it's, there's no natural pathways that you seem to be following all the time, so it's, uh, it's a big challenge for the, the navigator and for the driver too. You know, it's, uh, there's no, uh, no obvious cautions until you're right on top of them and you're often going too quickly. In only their second outing together, there was another encouraging result for Louis Weichelt and Marit Besaitenhoek. Weet je wat, ons het gister het ons net ons staan trail en ons het net geruim klaar te maak. Vandag het ons met die eerste loop, ons het redelijk goed gegaan, maar ongelukkig 30 kilo's nou voor die einde, toe die bakkie warm geword, dat ons heel erg gestaan het en man, ons gelukkig is ons hier. The production vehicle championship is done and dusted with Foss and Pitchford, the champions, but with two events to go, one point separates second and third. The Heifeld 400 also settled the Special Vehicle Championship for Evan Hutchinson and Achim Bergman. But again, there's a good battle for second and third. Next up on the APSA Off-Road Championship calendar is the Toyota Dealer 400 based at Leinberg in Mpumalanga on October the 2nd and 3rd. Follow all the action right here on Supersport, your world of champions.